In this video, I'm going to explain to you how to connect your IP phone and multiple devices via the IP phone to your network. The simple setup would be connect the IP phone to your network without any devices attached to the IP phone. So let's get that set up and I will explain to you how to connect multiple devices, say example, multiple computers, multiple printers. In this case, let me show you the diagram. This is the network switch and this is the data jack. You have an IP phone and then you are going to bring in a workgroup switch and then connect all your devices to the workgroup switch and you connect all of these devices via this workgroup switch to the IP phone data jack. In the back of the phone, there is a data connection. So you are going to connect them to the data jack behind the phone and then all these devices connected to your network via the data network on this IP phone. So let's go back to the packet tracer and explain to you how that works. So this is a 3650 PoE switch. Let's look at the configuration. I'm not going to get into the configuration here. I'm going to show you how the physical connection works. I'm going to touch a little bit on the configuration, but that is for another video. Let's go to the enable mode, show VLAN. VLAN 100 is for voice, 101 is for data. I'm going to go to the physical view of the phone and I'm going to show you back of the phone. I'm going to zoom in. There are three ports in this switch. One is RS-232, that is a console port. This is the power jack and you can bring in a power connector to locally power this phone and this is the connection going to the switch and this is the connection going to the pc so what you are going to do with this physical connection is you are going to connect this work group switch to this pc connection and this is going to go to your switch one of the disadvantage of this setup is a single point of failure if this phone have an issue all the devices behind this phone will be having issue. Say for example, someone come and unplug this phone power, all the devices will go offline. So that is why I would recommend you to power the phone via the PoE on the switch. That is why I did not power this phone locally using a power adapter. So let's look at how to power this phone via your switch using the PoE. Go to the switch configuration, show int status. You see it's already been connected. That means PoE is enabled on the port. In the Cisco switch, by default, PoE is enabled. You have to deny it manually to deny power on the port. So let's look at the power configuration. Show power in line. And you can see the IP phone is powered via this switch. Show run and you can see the port configuration this is a voice vlan configured and you did not deny the power here so let's deny the power conf t int geek 101 let's do no power in line let's look at what other commands are never means never apply in line power let's do never and there is no other commands left so apply this one and write show int status still connected so let's try shutting the port and bringing back up and see that denies the power show in status still connected so you cannot deny power in uh, cisco packet tracer switches but you can deny power on a real cisco switch but i can show you if you power this phone via using the power brick it will not draw power from the switch so let's go back to the switch and look at whether it's still it is drawing power there's a lock message saying Geek 101 PD removed. That means power has been removed from the switch. So let's look at show power in line. So it is still drawing power. 
and t int geek 101 shut no shut and now you see it is not drawing power from the switch but still connected to the port if this video is informative to you give me a thumbs up also if you want to see more of this kind of informative videos subscribe to the channel and turn on the notification